I'm going to show you how to wax your underarms at home like a professional. Click that subscribe button so you won't miss when these videos be dropping. <music> Disclaimer, I generally do not recommend home waxing. If you can't see a professional, see a professional. But I also know people are going to do what they're going to do anyway, right? For whatever reason, cost effective, they had a bad experience, you don't want to go to a professional. So if you're going to wax at home, at least have some tips on how to do it correctly. So this video is for the beginner. So if you are a little bit more advanced with at home waxing, you may want to fast forward past this part. But we're going to start from the very bottom and then work our way to super smooth skin. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's discuss contraindications. A contraindication is something that will prevent or prohibit you from getting wax that may cause a negative adverse reaction to the waxing. So a few, there are many, but I'm only gonna name a general few things that you may be doing that you don't realize that will possibly interfere with your waxing and cause a negative effect like a breakout or even skin lifting, which is something that you definitely do not want. Okay, so if you are taking any steroids, you're taking any medication that thins the blood, or thins the skin. If you're using any type of chemical exfoliant or abrasive, like a chemical peel, or any other acids in your cleansing products, you want to prohibit using those items seven days before you begin waxing. But of course, do not stop taking any type of medication without your doctor's approval. So definitely want to make sure that you're safe before waxing. So just keep those things in mind. So to start waxing, you're going to need a few supplies. Let's go over those things. So the first thing that you are going to need is a safe skin cleanser. This is something that you want to be able to use. It's going to remove the dirt, oil, and debris that may prohibit the wax from applying super smooth. So you're going to need gauze or even a cloth paper towel to apply your cleanser to the areas that you're going to be waxing. Of course you're going to need your wax sticks. You can use a full stick or you can do like I do and break the sticks in half. Use a half stick because you know you can use both ends and you want to make sure you don't double dip. So to save on product you can break your sticks in half and use both ends. Even if you're going to be waxing yourself, you want to make sure that you wear protective gloves. This is going to protect your skin from anything that's in the environment you may touch and not realize that you're touching because when you wax hair, you also remove a layer of dead skin and now you have your fresh, new, beautiful skin revealed and you don't want to touch and bring things out of the environment to your new skin so definitely you want to wear protective gloves sometimes wax can leave a residue behind and so you want to remove that residue with a little oil also the oil is great for hydrating the skin and bring a little bit of moisture back post wax and also you want to pair that with a little aloe vera gel and lastly you need the main star of the show some wax now this is my own personal wax It'll be coming to the market real soon. So first things first, clean hands. I don't have to tell you that, I hope. But I kind of just did, right? But put your gloves on. Put your gloves on before you start. So we're gloved up. They got a little oil on them, which, by the way, I do. I oil my gloves always. We'll get to that in a minute. You take your gauze. You take your cleanser. A few drops on your gauze. Take your arm. Cleanse. This is what we're working with. And as you're cleansing, you can kind of see the direction that the hair is growing. So I have some hair here going downward, and this is kind of going up that way. Next, you want to dry. Some people use powder after they dry. I do not. I do not use powder. Next step, I personally like to oil my gloves. Oil your gloves, this just keeps the wax from sticking. So for a good underarm application, and we're going to do this underarm in sections, you take about this much wax. 
Once you have determined which way the hair is growing, you apply the wax accordingly. So you want to apply with the growth. So you go and apply it and you are going to create a lip, which is just pretty much curving the wax stick around. It's going to create a lip. So you just bring the stick around like so and it leaves a little hunk of wax right under there. And as you're doing this, you want to press it into the skin. So the not so fun part is keeping your arm up this entire time. Because if you put your arm down, you're going to glue yourself together. And that's not fun. <laughs> so keeping your arm rested, rest it on your head, rest it on the wall. You want to press, pat, make sure the wax is set. How you determine the wax is set is how, you see how I'm touching it? My hand is not sticking. It's not going to stick anyway because I oil my gloves for the most part. But it still will still catch on. So it's not latching onto the gloves at all. Which pretty much means it's set. You created that nice little lip. See that little hunk of wax right there? You want to pick that up. And that's your lip. Now, sometimes I will just kind of pull right at my outer breast area, pull, and um, that'll kind of like have me pulling the skin taut. So I'm pulling down this way and I'm going to pull up and then just kind of hurry up and apply a little pressure. Okay, so there's some hair that's left. So because there is some hair that's left, you got to go over it again. And sometimes you do. So if you want to pull your arm a little tight, taut like so, you can. And then, as you see, I got a little less wax. So I'm applying it more thinner. And I'm just pressing into the hairs. And I showed you how to create a lip. You can still follow that process. I didn't really create a lip on this one. It's pretty thin. So I'm going to use my stick actually as a removal. And you see how the wax is kind of stuck on the glove. This is why it's good to have oil. My stick and apply it to create my lip. Okay. We got more hair. Look at that. So you know the hair grows in layers, so it's not going to catch it all in the first round. So sometimes you may have to go over it again. That's totally okay. Let me see. So we're doing a reverse lay and an actual lay. Wow, to have that much hair. Okay, so my next section grows up here. So I use the start here and pull it upward. Create the lip, which is just taking your stick around. And pull your arm here. what we have that is a lot of hair it didn't even look like it was that much wow and then you can see they grow in all kinds of directions they don't look as uniformed as my first strip like up here is what's the closer I got to the top they are all kinds of ways like do you see this they are all kinds of directions. More here is more a little more uniform, but here. And I'll teach you guys how to study your strip so that you can know what the hair is actually doing. So for me personally, I usually just be done because I'm not going to tweeze all this for sure. As long as I get the bulk of it, I'll be fine. 
Now, if you want, you can do one full. Now, for me personally, I don't care if I get 100% of the hair. As long as I get 90, 95%, I'm good. Like, as long as I don't lift up my arm and you see Satchmo sitting up under here, I'm fine. That's another reason why you want to go to a professional because they're going to get 100% of the hair. I know I do. So, you want to take your oil on your gauze, apply it to the area wax to get rid of all of the residue. With that same gauze, follow up with your aloe, and this is going to help cool and soothe. And it should feel nice and smooth and just better. And this is before, this is after, and I have to work on my pigment. Definitely gonna start working on my underarm pigment. I hadn't really cared until you know I started wearing these type of tops. And it's like now my underarm gotta look a little better. We gotta do better, child. But yeah, that is pretty much it. That is how I do it. No two estheticians, no two professionals, no two individuals do it the same. That is what works for me when I wax my own underarms at home. Remember, it's probably not gonna be 100% perfect which is why you need to see a professional because they can get in those hard areas. You're tired from your arm being up, your head hurting from all of this and trying to pull and stretch. It can be a bit much when you're trying to do it on your own. So I understand that there are times you may have to do it on your own. Like I am in this situation today. I don't want to go to the gym like this, which you shouldn't be going to the gym after wax anyway, but another story for another day now if you can again go to a professional but i hope this video was helpful for when those times you do have to wake up this is reese wright with adore her beauty signing out